and then I'll show you how to think about it in a way that makes it completely not confusing. Right now I want to broach the topic of change of variables, which we will also call change of coordinates. And the formula that we'll use all the time is the formula that we just derived. We think of it as integration by substitution. I'll change one thing in it. You see that you have f prime on both sides. So it's just some function. So I just want to denote it by f. It's not important that this is the derivative of something. What's nice here is that if it is the derivative of something, then we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus directly to this integral. But this identity would be valid for any function f, even if we don't know what it's a derivative of. So think of it as me relabeling f prime as, as f. So in this way, it's not any more general. It's just a little bit more generic, I guess. So that's the formula that we'll use. And I'll talk about, like I just said, change of variables, a topic that's very confusing. And it will become less confusing because of our geometric setting. And that's what I'm hoping to illustrate. So what I'll talk about first is how confusing it is. So I'll show you the formula for the derivative of the inverse function. And it's a formula that all of you are familiar with. We'll derive it very easily. And uh, the point that I want to make and the way in which I'll explain it will purposefully make it a little bit confusing. I've always found it confusing. And I'll try to guess what a lot of people find confusing about it. So that's the point of this little segment. And then I'll show you how to think about it with the help of the geometric setting in a way that makes it completely not confusing. And then we'll see if you agree with me as to the degree of how confusing things are. Suppose we have two functions, f and g, and they're the inverses of each other. For example, we could have e of x, and what's the inverse of e of x? Log naturally. And so let's try to write down what it is that makes them the inverses of each other. And what it is that makes them the inverses of each other is that if I take log of x and I plug it into the e to the x, then I get back x. The way I think about it is that, you know, this function sends x to natural log of x, and then this function sends it back to x. Does that make sense? So if you start with 7 and you evaluate log of 7, then e to the log of 7 gives you 7 back. So it takes you back. That's how I think about the inverses. It also works in the opposite direction. That's just a fundamental fact of life that, you know how matrices don't commute? But if they are the inverses of each other, and then they do commute. That very nice fact from linear algebra. It's a special case of this more fundamental observation that two functions do not commute if you take their compositions. For example, cosine of x squared is not the same as cosine of x squared, two completely different functions. But if they're the inverses of each other, then they do commute in a composition, and that's also x. And it's, of course, this property that's the key to deriving the relationship between their derivatives. The reason why I enjoy what we're about to do is because it's the only operation that's available to us. And that is to write down an identity and then take derivatives of both sides. So it seems silly, but that is the approach and that is the operation that will solve all of the problems that we'll deal with over the next I don't know how long. And it's really the only thing that's available to us. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to write down that the composition of f, because that's what it means for the functions f of g to be the inverses of each other. And now we're going to take derivatives of both sides. And of course, we'll use the chain rule on the left. We're taking a derivative with respect to x. And we get that f prime. OK, that's very nice. And so now I can write the formula that we're actually are after is that the derivative of g of x. So here's the formula for the derivative of the inverse function. Okay. 
If I were to read this formula in the simplest way possible, it actually ends up being an incorrect reading. But I would say that the derivatives of the functions that are inverses of each other are algebraic inverses of each other. Do you see how the derivative of g is 1 over the derivative of f? And of course, I'm, I skipped a very important part that this doesn't read x, this reads g of x. So are they algebraic inverses of each other or are they not algebraic inverses of each other? And if they are, in what sense? Well, let's check. The derivative of e to the x is, is e to the x, okay? And the derivative of log of x, 1 over x, okay? So are they the algebraic inverses, reciprocals, I guess you would say, algebraic reciprocals of each other? Uh, they're not, okay? But this formula doesn't really say that they are. It says that the derivative of f needs to be evaluated at g of x, okay? So if I plug that in here, if I, instead of x, which is x, replace it with g of x, which is log of x, then I get x, and yes, indeed, they are the reciprocals of each other. Does that make sense? And you can try that with any pair of functions that are functional inverses of each other. So that's how this formula reads, right? It's not as straightforward as saying that they are reciprocals of each other, algebraic inverses of each other. It works this, this way also, like here, I can plug in, if I now think of this as f and this of g, as g, plug in g of x, which is e to the x, and there you go, they are algebraic inverses of each other. And maybe this wasn't the perfect example because log of x is 1 over x, so there's kind of, there seems to be a reciprocal embedded right in there. But try it with x cubed and cubed root, and you'll see that, and you'll see that that's, that's how it works. So I actually find this confusing. And even though the derivation is compact and not super complicated, right, there's just a lot happening and you have to be careful. And they're not as simple as being reciprocals of each other because it's very important uh, where you evaluate those functions. And if I had to describe the reason for why it's so confusing, I would say that it's because this discussion is disconnected from any physical problem. It's just an arithmetic exercise, and we don't have interpretations for the functions f of g. So whatever it is that we discover in this formula, we just have to take it at its face algebraic value and just know that the derivative of one of these functions needs to be evaluated not at the same x as the other function, but at x plugged into that function, right? See, it's a, it's a mouthful. It's actually hard to say. And if it's hard to say, then it's almost impossible to receive by ear. Does that make sense? Like, if it's hard to say, then it's impossible to hear, right? As students, you know that if it's easy to say, that it's still very hard to hear, right? You have to say it yourself. But when it's difficult to say, it's almost impossible to hear. Okay, but let me show you a situation where we will have two functions that are inverses of each other and where an application of a formula like this would be completely straightforward and you won't even know where the confusion, where the confusion might come from. And that will be the case because we will anchor our discussion in geometry. <laughs>